Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a funny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Thank you for 21,000 subscribers. Keep subscribing, keep liking, keep commenting, and keep supporting us. We really do appreciate. Uh, please motivate me by giving me stuff to react to. I will really, really appreciate you guys. Uh, today I'm going to be reacting to full conversation with Shaitan on Judgment Day. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the ayah he says, وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَعَدَكُمْ وَعَدَ الْحَقِّ وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ وَمَا كَانَ لِيَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا أَنْ دَعُوتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي فَلَا تَلُومُونِي وَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ مَا أَنَا بِمُسْرِيخِكُمْ وَمَا أَنْتُمْ بِمُسْرِيخِيَّ إِنِّي كَفَرْتُ بِمَا أَشْرَكْتُمُونِ مِنْ قَبْلِ إِنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ A very brief summarized translation of the ayah says that Shaitan said when everything had been decided, when the affair had been settled, when everything was said and done, that God made you a promise and His promise is the truth. And I made you a promise but I lied to you, says Shaitan. And I did not have any control over you, aside from the fact that I would invite you, I would persuade you, and you responded to me. You inclined to listen to my suggestion. So do not blame me, but blame yourselves. I cannot help you today, nor can you come to my aid and my rescue. Without a doubt, I completely disassociate myself from anything that you people have done and associated with me. And there is no doubt about the fact that those who do wrong, those who wrong their souls and cross the lines and boundaries that God has set, for them reserved exclusively is the most painful, tormentful punishment imaginable. This is the summary of the ayah and subhanAllah in the Quranic, you know, style and fashion, it's very straightforward. Most of it you're probably able to understand and decipher just from this. So first and foremost, Al-Hasan al-Basri rahmullahu ta'ala in the narration of Ibn Abi Hatim, Al-Hasan al-Basri rahmullahu ta'ala, he comments on this ayah and he says that this is, he basically lays out a scene. He said, where is this taking place? Where is shaitan having this conversation? And who is he having this conversation with? This almost seems like a public statement, like a public address. So what's exactly going on here? So he lays out the scene that after Lama قُضِيَ amru, as Allah says, what that means is that the reckoning has been done. Those who are going to heaven have gone to heaven. Those who are going to Jannah have gone to Jannah. Those who are going to the fire of hell have reached the fire of hell. Everyone is settled into their final abode. And at that particular time, Shaitan, Iblis, who we also know as, he stands up like a khatib. Yakumu khatiban. He stands up like a khatib, like somebody addressing an audience. And he stands on a pulpit made of fire. And while he's standing on that pulpit made of fire, he's addressing the inhabitants of hell. Ashabun nari, khalidin fiha. He's addressing the people that are doomed to an eternity in the fire of hell. And he says to them there, because one of the interesting dynamics, you need a little bit of background about this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah number 41, in surah Fussilat, He tells us, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا رَبَّنَا أَرِنَا الَّذِينِ أَضَلَّانَا مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنْسِ نَجْعَلْهُمَا تَحْتَ أَقَدَامِنَا لِيَكُونَا مِنَ الْأَسْفَلِينَ That when... The people who have disbelieved and rejected the message from Allah, when they reach the fire of hell, over there they will call out and they will proclaim that, Oh Allah, we know we are in no position to call upon you. We know that we cannot ask for any reprieve or any release from here. But what we request of you, what we ask you for is show us the people. Make available to us the people, whether they be jinn or ins, whether it's shaitan or bad people, who dissuaded us from the truth? 
who impacted us negatively, who recruited us to the bad things that we got stuck and in, involved in. Rabbana arina ladini adallana min al jinni wal ins. Show us those people. Why? Najalhuma tahta akadamina. So that we can step on them. So that we can crush them. Liakuna min al asfalin. And they can be completely obliterated and humiliated and annihilated here today. So there will be this type of anger and violence that will take place in the fire of hell. And so this gives you a little bit of background. So as the inhabitants of hell are kind of closing in on Iblis and Shaitan, and they're encroaching upon him, but then something very fascinating. Then those who disbelieve, they'll say, قَدْ وَجَدَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ مَنْ يَشْفَعُ لَهُمْ فَمَنْ يَشْفَعُ لَنَا So the disbelievers, those who rejected Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life, and believing in Allah, in the message from Allah, they will say that those who believed, complied, submitted, they found somebody to speak on their behalf. We need somebody to speak on our behalf. فَيَقُولُونَ مَا هُوَ غَيْرَ إِبْلِيسِ it would obviously have to be Iblis, it would have to be Shaytan. Well, he's the one that we listened to. He's the one that we followed. He's the one that we were compliant to. So it's got to be Iblis, it's got to be Shaytan. He's the one who convinced us of this. And they'll tell him that the Prophet ﷺ speaks on behalf of the believers. Uh, so you speak on our behalf since we followed you. And when shaitan will stand forth and proceed forward, it will be the most horrendous stench that any creation of God has ever experienced coming from shaitan. And then shaitan will basically go and he will attempt to speak. And at that time, he will turn around. Instead of trying to intercede on their behalf in front of God, when he gets up to the pulpit, then he'll basically pull a plot twist. He'll turn around and face the audience that is standing behind him that wants them to vouch for them. And he will say, In Allah wa'adakum wa'ad al haqi wa wa'adtukum fa akhleftukum. Your mistake is the fact that God made you a promise and God was truthful with this promise. I made you a promise, but I was lying to you all along. I was lying to you all along. So this is kind of the backdrop of what we're talking about in Surah 14, Ayah 22. So now you can imagine all of hell is basically crowding in, they're encroaching in, they're moving in on Iblis, on Shaitan, to just completely annihilate him and satisfy, quench kind of their bloodthirst that they have at that moment out of their frustration with themselves. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, He proclaims in the Qur'an, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا رَبَّنَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell them at that time that however frustrated you might be with yourself at this particular time, I was more angry and upset and frustrated with you every single time the message was brought to you, by, but you kept rejecting it. أَكْبَرُ مِن مَقْتِكُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ إِتْتُدَعُونَ إِلَى الْإِيمَانِ فَتَكْفُرُونَ so these people out of their frustration, they're, crowd, they're coming in on shaitan. At that time, shaitan addresses them. And what is his message? I want us to focus on his message just for a couple of minutes and really pick up on some of the lessons. Not that we're necessarily learning these lessons from shaitan, but what we're learning from, and this is the profound, remarkable mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I, I would like to make a little bit of a side note here. Whenever we talk about the fire of hell, people are very overwhelmed. People are very kind of frightened and scared. And they're like, you know, how is this some type of a message of inspiration? How is this a message of hope? How is this a message of encouragement? We're talking about hell. We're talking about people trying to kill each other in hell. And then shaitan is talking, standing up and yelling at these people who are stuck in hell. Like, how is this helpful in any way, shape or form to me? Because they feel overwhelmed by it. But what you have to understand, and this is our short-sightedness that we don't realize this, where are we reading about this? We're reading about it here and now. So we have every opportunity in the world to avoid this fate. That's the part we miss. Yes, the Qur'an very powerfully and very, um, you know, overwhelmingly describes 
the fire of hell and the torment and the punishment and it can be very overwhelming but we're reading about it here and now it's we have every opportunity to correct make whatever course correction needs to be made that's the mercy in all of this so as we sit here and we read about the conversation between people in hell and shaitan in the fire of hell let's 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 figure out what we can do to avoid that particular fate so he says a few things the first thing that he tells them Inna Allah wa'adakum wa'ad al-haq. God made you a true promise. What is the promise of God? The promise of God is the fact that there is an afterlife. That there is resurrection. That there is accountability. That there are consequences. That there is a good and a bad. And a right and a wrong. And a light and a darkness. That's what God informed us. That's what Allah told us. And all of that is true in reality. For a lot of my younger brothers and sisters who are going through a particular dynamic and experience in their lives where everything that they believe or they've been told that they believe is being questioned, is being brought up for discussion, is being reevaluated, know for a fact that everything that we consider, that the Quran tells us, that the Prophet has told us, that we might entertain as being theoretical, as being possible, know that it's the absolute truth. And I know you're going to say that's easy for me to say now. But it will be really hard for all of us to admit to in the life of the hereafter. And that's what shaitan is saying. I promised you certain things, shaitan says. But I lied to you. I was lying through my teeth. What's, what's some of the things that shaitan told us? He told us to live for the here and the now. What are some other things shaitan told us? Shaitan told us that being devout, praying five times a day, giving charity, prioritizing our spirituality over our popularity, categorizing, prioritizing our character and personal development over materialism, that all of this was going to make us suffer in this life. All of this was going to put us behind the eight ball. All of this was a surefire path to failure. That's what shaitan told us. That's what he tells us. That every single time you make the more difficult, correct choice, you're actually harming yourself. Right? So now, now, what happened? Asr's here. And without overwhelming anyone here too much, and I honestly mean this, sincerely mean this, please forgive me, I apologize if it just does seem very heavy to just kind of mention, but it's the words of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ talks about, there's a more specific narration about Asr, and then there's a more general narration about any prayer, man fatatu salatun, faka'annama wutira maluhu wa ahluhu. As somebody who just lets a prayer just slip through, wasn't sick, wasn't ill, wasn't stuck, wasn't trapped, wasn't... But somebody who just kind of lets a prayer, a prayer, a salah, just kind of just slip through, just loses it like that. Because it just wasn't important enough. The Prophet ﷺ says that such a tragedy has befallen that person. But maybe that person doesn't realize that if that person was to realize the scope of this tragedy, it'd be a greater tragedy than losing all your wealth and all your family. That's how shaitan operates. Now what naturally happens after that? Once that asr adhan is called, now there's guilt. Which on an individual level can be helpful, but shaitan now further, he's going to, he's going to turn that knife. And that guilt will become despair. And that despair will become frustration. And that frustration will eventually, very unfortunately, devolve, will rot, will fester until it becomes a full-scale crisis of faith. What kind of a religion puts that type of pressure on you? What kind of a God makes these types of demands of you. 
And then God forbid, wal ayathu billah. That person will say, well, I want nothing to do with such a religion or such a God. You see this, the trajectory and how terrible it was. This is how shaitan operates. So that's why we always have to be on guard. That's where taqwa comes in. Consciousness, awareness, diligence, cognizance. Being alert. Always. And then he goes on to say, فَلَا تَلُومُونِي وَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ So don't blame me, but blame yourselves. Don't blame me, but blame yourselves. Guess judgment day is going to be a crazy, crazy day. I'm just seated here thinking to myself, um, we're all going to be given that chance to be judged on that day. Is Shaitan also going to be judged? Or his judgment has already been passed and hell is his permanent place. Also, why can't God give Shaitan like a second chance? You know? Or does God believe and know that Shaitan will forever be bad? And even on judgment day, while others go to hell, others to heaven, is it necessary to still have the world after this? Where there is good and bad that exists, why not get rid of the bad that exists in the, wo in the world? That's something I was thinking of and would love you guys to help me with the answers to those questions that I've asked. Let me know what you think. If there's anything you want me to react to, let me know by dropping the name or the link down below and I'll be more than glad to react. To whatever you suggest make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video